recording. There we go. All right. Yes. Yeah, so um, today I'm not going to be here too, too, too long, but I really, um, I was asking the Lord last week. Um, this, this message came about maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. I was talking to the Lord about what um, to speak on this week. And um, through a lot of praying, I kept hearing in my spirit, the spirit of the roller coaster. And, you know, that's not something that we've ever heard before of an actual spirit. But, you know, I kept hearing that in my spirit and I kept asking the Lord to like reveal what this really is. You know, what is the function of this thing? What is this? Because when we think about it, it's something that we could possibly deal with, you know, and the spirit of the roller coaster is not a natural roller coaster that we go on and we catch a spirit by, by riding roller coasters. Like that's not what the spirit of a roller coaster is. But this is an actual spirit that operates within the mind, okay? The spirit of the roller coaster, what it does is it, this spirit operates within not only the mind, but the emotional realm. And what it does is it shifts. This is a spirit that shifts between the mind and the emotions, and it, ta- and it attaches itself through the soul, and soul wounds through unforgiveness, through bitterness, through hurt, abuse, abandonment, and trauma. So this is what the spirit of the roller coaster attaches itself to you through. And I'm going to name them again. So it attaches itself through soul wounds of unforgiveness, bitterness, hurt, abuse, abandonment, and trauma. So this morning as I was driving to work, I was praying, you know, and I was really praying in the spirit and asking the Lord to just reveal his hidden manna and to reveal you know, the things that he really wants us to know in this season, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to be able to receive an in-season word, right? I don't want to receive a a word from last season or for a season to come, but I want something that's going to help me have strength for right now. And I was praying this morning, I was asking the Lord just to reveal what he wanted to reveal. I had no agenda. I was just praying. And the Lord took me in the spirit whilst I'm driving to work. And I saw this serpent And I saw this serpent start to move like a roller coaster. You know what I mean? Like you see how the roller coasters go down and it flips and it does all those things. And that's what I saw in the spirit. And and God will show me that this spirit of the roller coaster, it takes the form of a serpent. And why? Because the reflex of a roller coaster is so fast. It's the same thing with the reflex of a serpent. The reflex of a spirit of a serpent is so fast that it can turn so quick at one time, right? And it can and it can do all these different things. You know, it can twist here, it can flip here, it can it can it can just move in a way that is like it like it's not a straight line, right? But it can move and it goes like crazy then, like craziness basically. And just like a natural roller coaster goes up and down, so does this spirit take on your emotions. So this spear comes in a form of a serpent and it, and it comes and it makes you, it makes you become um, submitted to this thing, right? And the reason why is because there's an improper balance in that it does not keep you secure in a sound mind. That's what the spirit of the roller coaster does. It takes you out of your security of having a sound mind, right? And because now there's an improper balance in your mind and your and your emotions, now what does it become? It becomes an abom- abomination. I'm learning how to say it right now because everybody always laughs at me that I always say abomination, like Pastor Blaine. So it, it, you now it, you now become an abomination, right? And and this spirit makes you an abomination because Proverbs. 11 one says that an improper balance is an abomination to the Lord. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 11 one. So if there's an improper balance, right? It now becomes an abomination. And what does that word abomination means? If you look up that word in the Hebrew abomination, it literally just means disgusting, but it doesn't only mean disgusting. Another definition for that word abomination is an idol. It's idolatry. So if you think about it, if if this spirit of the roller coaster takes on your mind and shifts between your mind and your emotions, and, and that word abomination means idol, right? 
what this thing does is it makes your emotions now become an idol before you. And now you worship your emotions before God, right? And instead of taking a step back and allowing God to have the final say, now your emotions take the place of God. And now your emotions have full reign as your God. So now it takes you any which way, just like a roller coaster. Does this make sense? So this is why this spirit is so destructive because just like a roller coaster can make any twist and turn at the at the at the slightest like just like that that's what this spirit does in your emotions you know but even though you know life in itself has highs and lows god is the one that keeps you grounded in the midst of that that emotionally you can still be stable despite the highs and lows but what does this spirit of the roller coaster do do it does the quite opposite when life is unstable, right, now Satan keeps you unstable as well, right? He keeps, because God wants you to be stable in the instability. God wants your mind to be sound in the midst of your trauma and your dysfunction and your trials and tribulations. This spirit, every which way you go, you know, the highs and lows of life, your, this spirit makes your emotions follow. It doesn't keep you grounded. It keeps you going from one way to another, to another. And you feel like then sometimes you're even going crazy because you can't really know if, am I really happy or am I really depressed? Do I really have fear? Do I really have anxiety? You know, so now you start to question even your identity because the, the spirit has be, has made your emotions and your, 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 your thoughts, your God then now everything that it throws at you, you think that's who you are. And you become one with your emotions and now it becomes your God, right? So it flips you upside down. It makes you not know which, it flips you upside down and it makes you not know what is coming next and why. All because you're strapped in. There's no escape. Just like in a regular roller coaster, you're strapped in that, that ride, right? So if you're going up, you have to stay up because you're strapped in. There's no escape. If that roller coaster goes upside down, because you're strapped in, you have to take it. You know, if it goes left, if it goes right, if it goes sideways, if it goes upside down, there's no escape because you're strapped in. The same thing is with this spirit. When you submit to this spirit, there's no escaping because you have strapped in yourself to that ride. Your submission is to the ride of your emotions instead of putting God as your trust in that solid rock, right? And another thing God will show me with this is that this can also be rooted in sin and the guilt of sin, right? Has anybody um, fallen short? Has anybody backslidden where, you know, after they backslide, they receive God's love, they receive God's forgiveness, and then the next minute they start condemning themselves, right? Or let's say in the moment of their sin, you know, after they sin, they feel that guilt and that shame, right? And that condemnation. And then they're like, you know what? No, God loves me. Let me not take this on, right? And then, right, when you got to go meet somebody, now you start to get scared again because you're like, oh, wow, what if this person finds out of my sin, right? It's like a roller coaster. I once was guilty. I was feeling condemnation. Then I felt good because I realized God's love for me. Then now I feel scared because I feel like somebody's going to judge me. Then I feel like, oh crap, Pastor Blaine's going to call this out on a Tuesday night. And then you go home and you're like, okay, I wasn't called out. So that means I'm good. And then, you know, it's just on and on and on. It's literally a roller coaster. And that's what God was showing me today that even in the guilt of our sin, this spirit can come upon us because this spirit, what it does is it, it, it tries to make you feel good one way that I'm in right standing with God. And then, no, I'm not in right standing with God. And then one minute, oh, I think I can achieve this thing. I can overcome this thing. Then the next moment is like, bam, no, I can't do this. I got to stay fallen. You know, I'm never going to overcome this thing. It's literally an emotional roller coaster, right? And so the thing is, is that one minute you're fine. And then the next minute you're not, right? There's no stability in your life, right? 
And one of the greatest things that this spirit is rooted in is offense. And a lot of things are rooted in offense, but this spirit of the roller coaster, its greatest way to grip you and strap you in is taking an offense. Why? Because just like um, in, the, in the natural realm, you choose to wait for the ride of the roller coaster, right? If you look at the park and you're like, man, I want to see that roller coaster, you will wait in line for that ride. Even if it's an hour, you will stand there and you will wait, right? In this spirit, what it does is it lies dormant. And through an offense or in a trigger of an offense, it waits. And then soon as that offense or that trigger arises, it now puts you on that ride. And it now straps you in. And now you start, your emotions start to go high and low, right? You thought you forgave this person. And as soon as you saw this person, you're now angry. And then now you're sad because they hurt you because you want a relationship with them. But then you go into their face and you start yelling, rah, rah, rah at them and scaring them away you know, telling them that you don't forgive them this and that. And then the next minute you're like, oh man, I feel bad. I wanna, you know, I wanna forgive them. I wanna go to them, you know what I mean? And, and, and through that offense, it makes your emotions just crazy. And it takes you on this ride that you don't even wanna go on, you know? And that's the thing that, the thing is, is that God wants you to not wait for the ride, but to stay on the solid rock and to allow him to have you grounded on the rock of your salvation to help bring healing and deliverance in your life, right? Most people have a fear of getting on a roller coaster, but this spirit makes you be afraid to stand on solid ground, okay? Let me say that again. In the natural realm, most people have a fear of getting on a natural roller coaster. But this spirit makes you be afraid to actually stand on solid ground. This spirit makes you feel afraid of actually being healed. This spirit makes you actually be afraid of taking responsibility for your actions of being wrong in the situation. This spirit wants to keep you so grounded in your emotions that I, and you justify it by the emotion. You justify it by the hurt, right? Like if you go up to somebody that hurts you and you slap them or you, or you cuss them out or, or when you see them, you're like, I don't want them around here. Or if you're having a party or something, you're like, I don't want them to be invited, right? That spirit is there because it does not want you to be on solid ground. It wants to allow the emotion to have rule and reign in your life. Because the one thing about your emotions is they lie and they're unstable. A lot of times when you feel something of an emotion, it's not the truth because the truth is God's word, right? And if I'm having an emotion of something that does not align with God's word, that means that it's a lie against the identity that God has given, me, right? Let's say that my father abandoned me, right? And, 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 and there's, there's a trigger, right? That triggers me to want to be depressed because I feel the abandonment of my father right? The word says that you are not rejected, but you have the spirit of adoption that cries out, Abba Father. So that emotion is lying to you now, telling you that you're an orphan and that you're a reject, right? So that emotion is lying to you, even though the emotion actually attaches itself to a real life event that took place, right? Nobody's denying the experience that you went through, but now that you know Jesus, now that you've encountered the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, now that you have encountered the healer, no longer can your emotions have full reign in your life where it keeps you in bondage to a lie that does not align to the truth of God's word. Does that make sense? This is why we have to know the word because it's the word that's going to set you free, right? What are the effects of this spirit of the roller coaster? It destroys relationships. And why? Because you don't know which version of that person you're going to get. Have you ever had a friendship with a frantic person that you don't know if they're going to be happy one minute, they're going to be upset one minute, they're going to be depressed one minute, they're going to complain one minute. This is what that spirit does. It destroys relationships because you don't know which side of that person you are actually going to get. It makes people walk on eggshells around you. And it even makes people lose your trust for that person. 
right? And also what does it do? It makes up vain imaginations against that person that they have an offense against. That's what this spirit does. It makes up vain imaginations against that person that you have an offense against. For example, let's say that you, you have rejection as you, let's say that you, that again, you know, the abandonment of the father is such a broad one, we can use that. Let's say that you are abandoned by your father, right? And you now deal with daddy issues, right? And, and let's say that you got into a relationship with a boy and he was trying to love you as much as he could, but you just could not trust him because of the hurt that you had towards your father, right? And he, the, he chose to go have dinner with his mother one day over having dinner with you, right? You now snap on this person, right? And you don't want nothing to do with him anymore because you feel like that he's abandoning you just like your father abandoned you, right? So now, so now this person, the boyfriend no longer trusts you because you now snapped on him. You cussed him out, you threw him out. You don't want nothing to do with him anymore. So now this man who was once your boyfriend does not trust you anymore, right? And now the boyfriend has a birthday party, right? He has a birthday party now, right? And now because he doesn't trust you, he chose not to invite you to this birthday party right? Now that girlfriend is going to make up a story in her mind of why she was not invited to that birthday party, right? And the thing about this spirit too, it never admits when it was wrong. It makes up a story though, to make them look like they were in the right, even though they were in the wrong, right? So she said, so let's say that she now makes up a lie that he beat her, right? And he abused her and that's why they're not together anymore. And that's why he didn't invite her to the party because he's ashamed of what he did to her, right? That's what this spirit does. It takes what is now a, what was the truth and now turns it into a lie to make them the victim, right? And make them the hero at the same time. Does that make sense? It's a roller coaster because in that, in that scenario, I just said she's the victim because she wasn't invited to the party, but she's the hero because she kicked him out for abusing her, even though that's all a vain imagination. Do you see how this is a roller coaster, right? Because we, we were here and now we ended up all the way over here when none of it doesn't even connect as one. That's what this spirit of the roller coaster does. It brings confusion of the mind. It's nothing but confusion. It's a roller coaster. And what else, do, what else is an effect of this spirit? It causes you not to hear God's voice clearly for your life. Why? Because when God does, when God does try to actually speak to you, the roller coaster and the screams of the effect of the roller coaster drown, drowns out the voice of God. Right? When you're on a roller coaster, what's the number one thing that you hear? You hear screams, right? So let's say that person on that roller coaster next to you is trying to talk to you during the roller coaster ride. You're not going to hear them because the screams are going to drown out what that person is trying to actually say to you. That's the same thing with God. When you have an emotional roller coaster going on in your mind, God is trying to speak to you in the midst of it because he's there with you but you will not hear him because the effect of the screams of the emotions is actually drowning out the voice of God for your life, right? Just like, a, and, and another thing that, another effect of this spirit is physical, physical ailments, you know? Just like a natural roller coaster causes nausea sometimes, right? Emotional roller coasters can cause physical sickness, right? People not being able to eat is one of them. When you're so tormented in your mind, you know, when there's an emotional roller coaster, you can't think straight. Sometimes people won't eat because there's stress involved, right? What else? Depression. 
anxiety, chest pain, panic attacks, all, <coughs> excuse me, all these different things are effects of an emotional roller coaster. And people look at this thing, <coughs> excuse me, people look at this thing as something that's simple. But I've dealt with this in my own life, you know, of an emotional roller coaster. There's times where I've had a Kundalini spirit operate in my life. And one minute I think I'm in right standing with God. The next minute I feel like I'm going to hell. The next minute I feel happy. The next minute I feel sad. All at a drop of a hat. That's how you know it's an emotional roller coaster because it's at the drop of a hat. You know, another thing that happens with emotional roller coasters big is mood swings. You can change at the drop of a hat. You can be happy one minute and shift just like that for no reason, right? And it's because the emotions is ruling in your soul instead of the Holy Spirit. Because you always hear there's a, there's a war for your soul, right? Don't you always hear that? Remember that, that teaching that I taught about how the spirit lusts after the flesh and the flesh lusts after the spirit. Why? Because they're lusting for your soul. If your soul is under the covering of the flesh, the spirit is going to lust after the flesh because of what the flesh possesses, which is your soul. And the same thing is if the spirit possesses your soul, right? And has reign over your soul. The, the, the flesh is now going to lust after the spirit because the spirit now is in possession of your soul. So the thing is, is about your soul is that the flesh creeps into that soulish realm through the emotions. And now we'll, now the emotions will do an effect because the, the mind, will, and the emotions are what? They're a part of your soul realm. But the work of the flesh is the torment that works within. It's the, it's the hurt of, of what happened to your soul but it's the flesh part of you. It's the demons that are in that flesh, you know, then where no good thing dwells. It's from that realm that is affecting the soul and the emotions. Does that make sense? Because we're made up of three parts, body, you know, uh, body, soul, and spirit, right? So if, if the spirit doesn't give us these things, which is an emotional roller coaster, obviously it's coming from the flesh. It's the, it's, the, it's the part of us where no good thing dwells in, right? And so that's where we need to have healing and deliverance. That's where healing and deliverance comes from. Because one thing that we don't want to do is have self-protection. Because that's what this spirit does. The spirit tries to protect yourself. That emotional roller coaster tries to protect the hurt, it tries to protect the offense. It tries to protect the bitterness and the anger and the trauma. It tries to, uh, it tries to protect it, you know? And what happens is when you have a sound mind, what does it do? It causes you to see truth. So this is why this spirit wants to block you from truth because it doesn't want you to experience what? What does the truth come to do? It makes you free. So that's why this spirit through the emotions, you know, have you ever heard somebody say the saying, I had a right to be mad, right? Has everybody ever heard that before? I have a right to be upset. I have a right to not let them back into my life. I have a right to hold unforgiveness towards them. It's because it's self-protection. They're trying not to protect their soul, but they're trying to protect the hurt that occurred to the soul instead of letting God heal that part of their soul. They want to protect that part of them. They want to protect the hurt. They want to protect the things that have happened to them. And they think that by that self-protection that they're gaining power and strength. But in all reality, they're doing nothing but just going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And through your emotions, you're doing nothing but burning bridges, burning friendships, losing trust, not being able to have peace, you know, um, and, and ultimately allowing the enemy to continue to torment your mind. That's what happens when this spirit comes upon you and you try to protect yourself. The only one that is my shield and my buckler is Jesus himself, the Bible says in Psalm 91, right? He is the only one that can protect you. But what we do, again, what does the mind do? What does that word abomination mean? It means idol. It means a God. 
So what the mind wants to do through the emotions is it wants to protect the hurt and it wants to play to be God. And so what this does now is it puts you in a place to be vulnerable because when you protect yourself, you are open for attack because you don't have, you're not all knowing, you're not all powerful. So you can't protect yourself in fullness when you protect yourself. Because as, and, and two, what, what does the spirit also do? It, build, it builds up walls, right? It gives every excuse in the book why I can't get close to this person. It gives every excuse in the book why, why I can't forgive this person. It gives every excuse in the book of why I cannot do right, right? Because again, what is it doing? It's trying to self-protect. And what is this? It's a lack of love for yourself. This is what God was showing me. It's a lack of love for yourself. When I was praying, uh, when I was praying, you know, about this message, I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, love with the love of Christ. And I said, okay, we've heard that saying before, love with the love of Christ. We've heard that. And God said, no, love yourself with the love of Christ. And I said, okay. I said, because love in a broad sense, when you hear People say love with the love of Christ or love you with the love of Christ. You think that means extending that love to another person. But also God is saying love yourself with the love of Christ. You know, what happens is, is that are you, and the question is, are you extending that same love to yourself? Because if you think about it, self-protection really is self-harm. Self-protection is really self-hatred. Self-protection is really low self-esteem because at the end of the day, I say it's self-harm and it's self-hatred because you're choosing something, you're choosing something that is not all powerful to protect you over something that is all powerful that could very well protect you. Does that make sense? You're choosing something that's lesser than to protect you than someone that has all power and authority in his hand. And that's why I say, and God says here that when you allow yourself to go through an emotional roller coaster and allow this thing to grip you and not give it over to him and get, and allow him to heal you and deliver you from this, it's because there's a lack of love for yourself. Because are you truly accepting God's love? Because what does perfect love do? It casts out all fear. What does God's love do? It covers a multitude of sin. So even the sin that takes place in your emotions, that love covers that. But are you allowing God to love you through that, in that, in that mess? You know, because God's love doesn't also cover your hurt, but it also covers every part of who you are. It covers your emotions. It covers you know, it covers those insecurities about you. It covers those offenses about you. It covers every part of what does not make you in the image of God. That's what his love does. It covers it and not only does that, not only does what, it transforms it into the right thing so that you can come into the image of God. So this is why, you know, in a nutshell, this spirit of the spirit of the roller coaster is an emotional battle. And what it does is it, and I'm not saying that one minute you're good, the next minute you're not one, like, I'm not saying that you have to switch emotions in five seconds for you to have an, a roller coaster. This could be just in your life, you know, one minute you're good, you know, one week you're good, the next minute you're depressed, right? The next minute you're feeling good, the next minute you're feeling sad, right? The next minute you're feeling unsure, the other minute you're feeling like, oh, I can conquer the world. That's also that's an emotional roller coaster. One minute you're good, the next minute you're not. That's what instability is. Being stable means you're being secure in the position of who you are. That is what security is. All right? That's, I mean, that's what stability is. I'm sorry. Stability is security in, in who you are. That is what stability is. You know, it's, it's, it's security in your position. That's what stability is. And if you're not secure in who you are, that means you're unstable, right? And what does the Bible say? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And let not that man think that he can ask anything from God, right? That's what the book of James says. 
You know, if you think about a double-minded man, it's a roller coaster. Because that one minute, he's happy. The next minute, he's sad, right? One minute, he's good. The next minute, he's bad. One minute, he has faith. The next minute, he doesn't, that he has, he has doubt and unbelief. The next minute, he has faith. The other minute, he has fear. That's double-mindedness. That's instability. That's insecurity. And that's what um, an emotional roller coaster is. And this is why God tells us, and this is, and this is a question I want to ask today, you know, what's more important to you? Is it your feelings or is God's perfect will? Is that what is more important? Your feelings or God's perfect will for your life? Is my feelings more important or me forgiving so I can move forward in my destiny, right? Is my bitterness more important or is giving grace to that hurt, to that person that hurt me, hurt me worth more so I can get my healing, right? Is my fear more important or stepping out in faith and allowing God to move on my behalf more worth it? You know, we've got we've to gotta ask ourselves that question. What is more important? My feelings or God's will for my life, right? What's more important, your feelings or your faith? Because guess what? Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a position that now brings a feeling, okay? Let me say that again. Faith is not a feeling, but it's a position that now brings a feeling. What does that mean? When you are in your position of faith, right? You can be in the midst of a huge trial, but in the midst I stand in my faith and now produces a feeling of joy that I can now have strength. In the middle of me going through, let's say that I'm going through this, the worst breakup of my life, right? The feeling of depression wants to come on me, right? The feeling of, of anger wants to come on me. The feeling of abandonment wants to come on me. But if I'm rooted in faith, my position of faith, now a feeling of peace can manifest. Now a feeling of joy can manifest. You know, now a feeling of even being healed can be manifest because I choose to stand on faith instead of run after a feeling, right? Because when you run, you're abandoning your post. But when you stand firm, God can use you in that position. Amen. We all know the scripture, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, right? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and that acceptable and that perfect will of God. Guess what, y'all? We got to take back our mind from the enemy, you know? How are we renewed by the trend? Why, how are we transformed by the renewing of our mind? The Bible says in Ephesians, by the washing of the water of the word. And what does that washing of the water of the word do? It brings the bride to its rightful place of being without spot or blemish. Do you think Jesus wants to marry a bride who is mentally unstable? Do you want, do you think Jesus wants to marry a bride that one minute she believes that he's his he is her bridegroom and then the next and then the I mean yeah bridegroom and then the next minute she feels like he's the enemy no Jesus doesn't want to be with an insecure bride but Jesus wants through the word for the bride's mind to be transformed <clears throat> for the bride's mind to be cleansed <clears throat> for the bride's mind to be made ready and I truly believe that Every man has a choice, you know, just like when you go to that, to that amusement park, every man has a choice to either get on that roller coaster or to stay on the rock, to stay on the solid ground. And the same is with you. You have a choice to stay rooted in Christ when that emotion presents itself to you, right? When you feel that person entered the room and you were happy before they came, but now when they came in the room and you want to punch them in the face, you know, you got to be able to learn how to cast down that emotion, right? And ask God to help you forgive that person instead of allowing the emotion to flip like that. Second Corinthians 10, four and five says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right? Casting down imaginations 
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is how you win this war of the emotional roller coaster. First of all, not responding to the emotion right away, not being impulsive with the emotion, but when the emotion arises, because I'm not going to sit here and say the emotion is not going to arise, because Satan has a, has, a, has a plan against you to throw the emotion at you. Satan is one of the best pitchers in baseball because he wants to throw the best emotions to your mind and, to, and your way. But you have to, <clears throat> to learn how to not swing at that emotion right away, <clears throat> but take a step back and, and examine that emotion. Take a step back and not allow that emotion to, to control your life. You know, don't feed into the emotion. You have a choice. A lot of people love to say the devil made me do it. I can't stand that saying because Jesus died so the devil can't make you do it. Come on. Do I have a church in here? Jesus died so that the devil can't make you do it. He gave you free will. You know, he gave you a choice. Like I said, if somebody spits in my face, I have a choice to punch them back or I have a choice to walk away, right? Even Jesus, when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible says that when he was with the religious people, right? And Peter was trying to stop them. What did Jesus say? Couldn't I call for legions of angels to come, right? And rescue me. But Jesus said, no. Father, not my will, but thy will be done, right? What it was, it 12 legions of angels. Then couldn't he call 12 legions of angels to come? Even Jesus had a choice to tap out, but Jesus chose to carry that cross knowing that it was going to bring salvation to humanity. <clears throat> and, and a lot of times what we do is we allow the circumstance to dictate the emotion too. <clears throat> I'm having a bad day at work. So that means that I, I, I can choose to be in a bad mood, right? I'm having a bad day at work. So I can choose to be mad, right? Look, I just had an instance yesterday where I was triggered, right? And I was upset, but I, could, I chose right there and then to not be mad anymore, right? I chose right there and then to forgive, I chose right there and then to be happy, right? I could have very well let the rest of the day be ruined because I fed that emotion, because I wanted to go on an emotional roller coaster, right? But I took a step back and I said, you know what, God, I want to do something different this time. Let me choose to be happy, even though I was upset in this moment. And guess what? God honored that because he didn't, because I didn't want to feed the emotion, right? Let me tell you. People will hurt you. You will go through things that will hurt you. But uh, do you want to stay in hurt? Like I know people's, and you know, this is a revelation that I'm getting more and more as I get older. People are always going to hurt me. People are always going to talk about me. People are always going to want to hurt me. But I have a choice not to be hurt. I can still experience joy in the midst of people wanting to hurt me or people actually hurting me. Why would I choose to be upset and hurt when I can choose to actually be free, when I can choose to actually have life, you know? And a lot of times what this does is we have to make sure that we are knowing who we are in Christ, knowing that the words and the hurt and the actions of people do not, do not really define who we are. But as long as we know who we are in Christ, that emotional roller coaster doesn't have to strap us in anymore. But literally, what unstraps you from that roller coaster is the word of God. And that word comes, that sharp two edged sword comes, right? And it separates asunder soul and spirit, bone and marrow, right? And it goes deep to the heart, right? Deep down to know the thoughts and the intents of that man's heart. That is what that word does. That same sword comes and cuts the straps off of those off of that roller coaster that no longer you are strapped in anymore. 
And this is what God wants us to walk in is freedom in our emotions and in our mind. God wants us to be able to walk that when somebody says something hurtful to you, you can say, thank you. Because guess what? That does not mean anything to me because I'm securing who my father says I am. I'm not secure. First of all, you don't pay no bills in my house. You didn't die for my sin, right? You don't, you didn't, you didn't do nothing for me. So why am I letting your opinion affect my identity? Because first of all, you've did nothing to me, but waste five minutes of my life that I can't get back, right? So that's the only thing that I'm going to allow you to take. I'm not going to let you take my pain. I'm not going to, not my pain. I'm not going to let you take my peace. I'm not going to allow you to take my freedom. I'm not going to allow you to take my joy because guess what? You're not worth it. You know, the only person that has the right to take anything from me is God himself because he laid down his life for me, right? And, and I can walk in, and let me tell you, this is revelation God has given me right now, even for myself, because I didn't plan on saying none of this, but this is fresh manna that we can walk in the freedom and the liberty that God has given us. And we don't have to allow people to take from us anymore. Stop allowing your father that has abandoned you 20 years ago, take your peace. Stop allowing them to take your joy. Stop allowing them to, to rob you of a relationship that you can have with the heavenly father who can actually give you what you're actually looking for. You know, that's what that emotional roller coaster does. It blocks you from actually receiving what God wants to give you because it wants you to see out of an eye of hurt. It wants you to see out of an eye of an offense. It wants you to see out of the eye of trauma instead of seeing out of the eye of freedom and out of mostly the eye of love, because that's what God is. He is love. So I'm here to tell you today, you can break this curse of the emotional roller coaster today. You do not have to be unstable anymore in your mind and in your emotions, but God has given you the helmet of salvation which protects the mind from the enemy coming against you. Come on, now, I feel the Holy Spirit here. He has come right now to give you the mind of Christ. He has come to give you the helmet of salvation. Then no longer can the enemy come up against your mind because where is the battlefield? It's in your mind. And if you are strapped up with the helmet of salvation, Nothing that Satan can throw against your mind can grab a hold, but it bounces up against that, that helmet and it just goes right back to the sender, but it goes back, back seven times greater. Amen. Because they may come to me, but they have to flee seven times, you know, away from me. <clears throat> and I truly believe that God is calling us today to take back our mind. Stop allowing the enemy to trick you. Satan is the biggest clown that wants to bring every trick in the book against you. But guess what? We are greater. We are stronger. We are more smart. We have more wisdom. Listen, men's knowledge may increase in these end times, but if men's knowledge increase, guess what? Even God's wisdom is going to increase upon us. And those things that the disciples were not ready to receive, God is now revealing to me and you as the end time church. Come on. I feel this thing right now. And God is wanting to bring us into a oneness with his spirit so he can use you in this end time to send and save that harvest of this soul that God is trying to bring into the kingdom. But you have to get over this. You have to overcome this. God has to be able to trust you because if you're unstable in your mind, you're gonna be unstable in your actions. And if you're unstable in your actions, God's not going to be able to trust you. But I believe today God is getting ready to set our mind free from the roller coaster in Jesus' name. Amen. True. Right, let me end this thing before I start acting a fool. <laughs>